this is Eric, and thank you for, for joining me again as we take a look at some comics and just talk about this, uh, this awesome genre, I think, of, uh, of entertainment. Um, this video is going to be focused primarily on um, Iron Man number 219, which I, I'm showing you right here. But uh, before we get to that, I would also like to go over a, uh, a comic haul that, um, that I picked up off of eBay recently. Um, and uh, I, I completely support my local comic shop. Um, I live in, uh, I, lo I love my town. And um, I remember that when I first moved here, I loved our main street in town. Uh, it's kind of like a, a, an any town USA kind of main street. And I recall thinking to myself and actually saying to my family, how amazing would it be if a comic shop opened up in this town? Because uh, as of that time, I had to drive quite a few towns over to go to a comic shop. Um, and uh, they were okay. It was it, it was a trek. It was certainly a drive, um, and it wasn't convenient. And then I remember one day my my family was driving through town, and uh, my kids came home and said, "Dad, you won't believe what's coming to town." And they told me that uh, a comic shop was coming. So I was so excited. Um, and, uh, I, I like to think I've been a, a good customer for, for, uh, several years since they opened. Uh, of course, I have a pull list there, and, um, and these comics I actually bought off of eBay from them, so, uh, I'm definitely, uh, interested in supporting my local comic shop, and to be quite honest, I, I probably wouldn't have bought these comics at all. Um, if not for me just trying to give them some business as they're, as they're closed with all the mandatory um, business closings because of COVID-19. So I thought I could uh, give them some business, hopefully um, help them out. And of course, uh, I have no problem buying comics, so um, I was happy to get these. So let's go through these first and see what we have here. Um, so uh, all these were on eBay as separate listings. So I, I took note of which ones I would like to buy and then emailed the owner of the comic shop and asked if he could give a kind of a package price and consolidate shipping. And uh, I was happy he did. So. Uh, I think I was able to get a, uh, uh, a good price for, for quite a few books here. And uh, all the ones I purchased fit my interests in, in terms of comics. So um, I'm happy all around. So um, the first comic on my, on my list here that I purchased is Iron Fist number 15 from 1977. video I mentioned that uh, I like Iron Fist because of uh, my martial arts background and uh, it's just something that always attracts me and uh, I also mentioned that I, I do enjoy collecting either number one issues or first appearance 
fun issue to have. Uh, the next, the next issue is a really, it's really three comics, and I'll show you in a second. Um, the Incredible Hulk four, four and nineteen, and four eighteen. Um, I mentioned. First video that uh, Captain Marvel is a uh, a well liked movie in my household, and one of our favorite characters in Captain Marvel is actually Talos, um, the Skrull, who is one of the the lead characters in that movie. And these two issues, uh, The Incredible Hulk number four eighteen, is where Talos first has a, a cameo appearance and in 419 he has his first full appearance so I thought that would be fun to pick up as well this um, this comic as well also has a, a special cutout cutout cover where I haven't opened this yet but if you were to open the cover there's a full page beneath that that's actually a cut in the cover right there. So I thought that was pretty neat. I don't have too many comic book covers, or I may not have any comic book covers that have something like that cut into them. I have a, a G.I. Joe comic book that has a, um, a hologram on it, which is pretty cool. But uh, this is what you call um, an ash can. This is my first ash can that I've ever purchased. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm, I'm pretty much a, a casual collector. Um, so I collect issues that are fun for me. And if I put these two next to each other, you can clearly see that these two are related. Um, I have a funny feeling if I open the cover on the main issue that this may be what the front page looks like or at least this area back here is what the front page look like now my understanding is that this ash can is not the comic book issue um, there's probably just some notes in here maybe some sketches maybe even just some nonsense Again, my understanding is that uh, in the golden age of comics, when publishers were trying to retain the rights or the trademarks of their characters and their stories, they would just publish almost like a, a shell of their comic books um, without any story in it, just to establish that the characters and maybe the title and anything else that may be unique to that storyline is owned by that publishing company. And that's what an ash can is. Uh, I think the name ash can came from um, basically you would print the version, you would print the edition on any paper you can find and then pretty much immediately throw it out. It was simply to obtain the rights to the characters or the story, and it was never meant to be sold. So, like like all things in the collectible industry, uh, industries, this these ash cans are now collectible, and I believe they're printed also just for that purpose to be collectible. So that's what I think this is. Um, so, again, it's my first one, and uh, I, I really don't see myself collecting too many more ash cans. I'd rather uh, have the issue and actually read them. Pull this over here. So here it is. Um, a variant cover of Captain America. Um, it looks like... Uh, and um, I'm not sure what volume this is. Um, I'm usually not one into variant covers, um, but I thought this one was pretty cool. Uh, Captain America was one of the earlier 
various comics I collected and um, the Red Skull to me is pretty cool. I like him as a character and uh, just seeing him hold up, I think the Red Skull himself is an action figure on this cover and he's holding up Captain America inside either a, I mean if we're talking storyline, maybe a block of ice. Captain America was frozen in a block of ice at one point, um, but it could also be uh, the Tesseract, which is something that appears in, in, in Marvel, especially in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, um, so they're action figures, and even um, even the, the logo here, the character, in as part of the logo, is an action figure, so I thought that was, that was pretty neat. Uh, pretty cool cover, uh, but again, I'm not I'm not really too much into um, the variant covers. Some some collectors absolutely love variant covers, and I think that's really cool too. Um, but they become some some sort of a um, I don't want to call it a, a profit scheme, but the comic companies know that. Many people collect variant covers, so they'll produce many different covers, sometimes for popular issues, and I'm sure they make um, an enormous amount of money off of that. So, uh, this is The Avengers number 184 uh, from June of 1979, and I believe this is the first time that um, the Falcon joined the Avengers, so uh, I know the, the, the Falcon, uh, I like him as a character, and this is the first time he joined the Avengers, so again, this is probably, I'm not sure if it's an issue I really would have purchased, but uh, because I, I'm i happy to have it, and it wasn't that much money, and I think I was helping my local comic shop, um, I, m I made the purchase. Um, this is the Invincible Iron Man number 100. Uh, it's not really a, an important issue. Um, it's from, I believe it's from 1977. Yep, 1977. Um, I enjoy Iron Man in comics. Um, so this is something I'm very happy to, to have. It's dedicated to Stan Lee on the inside, probably because it's issue 100. So there's a, a special dedication in this issue. Uh, maybe one day we'll, we'll use this as a comic that uh, I explore in the videos. But we'll see. Uh, the next was kind of a, a fun purchase. There are actually three comics in here. They were part of some uh, uh, some kids fun pack. I think the entire pack is just in the in the bag and board. It's Masters of the Universe. Only number three is on top, but there's two and one behind it. Um, I really just wanted Masters of the Universe number one. It's I believe it's pretty much worthless, but um, I grew up with He-Man action figures and uh, watching the He-Man cartoon on TV by the power of Grayskull, all that good stuff. So, um, again, it was a, a simple uh, a simple issue, an expensive issue, but something that I found a lot of fun. And that's what that's what this is all about for me. It's about it's about being fun and having fun. And and last from my my comic haul is uh, it's a Superman edition from I believe it's 1971. It's Superman number two thirty eight. And uh, again, this is it's not really an important issue. It's pretty pretty much a nondescript issue, but one thing I find cool is that in this issue, they explain the origins of the Kryptonian
Aryan race and I like that because this, uh, I'm a big fan of science fiction I love any type of story or movie that has to do with outer space um, aliens all kinds of things like that and Superman always has or almost always has that science fiction element to it which is really why I enjoy it uh, even even the Superman stories that take place only on Earth many times the the villain or Superman's adversary is from outer space for example Brainy Brainiac is one of Superman's main foes and he is this just incredibly smart uh, alien from outer space that collects worlds and cities and puts them in these little jars. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool and it's, it's one of my favorite things about Superman is the science fiction element of it. Okay, so those are all the books from my haul. Um, let's get into the story that I'd like to show us a little bit today. Uh, and again, this is Iron Man number 219. It's called The Ghost and the Machine. This is a, a three-part story. I believe it's called The Ghost. Um, this is not to be confused with a, a much more uh, modern story from Batman. I believe it was called The Ghost in the Machine. So, not to be confused in case you were you were thinking that <laughs> um, so this is one of the first comics I ever owned which is one of the reasons why I wanted to use it for one of the first videos I made um, I mentioned in my last video that um, my comic collecting hobby began when I was in elementary school quite young in elementary school and my parents allowed me to subscribe to a couple of Marvel comics to help promote me uh, to read and encourage me to read. And I have to say, it actually, it did work. Um, but Iron Man and Captain America were the two comic book titles that I was allowed or requested to subscribe to. And uh, this is from June of 19... Should be 87, I want to say. Yep, that's it. June 1987 is when this comic is from. And uh, I can recall keeping it stacked in my room. Um, and as the issues came in, I stacked them up. Then I began to bag and board them. Of course, this comic is always bagged and boarded. And uh, I just took it out for this video. But let's. Well, let's take a look through. We're gonna flip through some of the pages here and see what we can we can get. Um, we're not gonna look at the entire book. We're not gonna look at everything, but um, there are some things about this book that I find incredibly funny. Um, and the first has to do with uh, this opening page right here. Um, here you have a very uh, a very uh, fit man running down the beach with some young ladies looking at him and of course that's Tony Stark so I find it pretty interesting to compare the the image of Tony Stark in this in this comic from the 80s compared to the version of Tony Stark that many people are familiar with today from the movies I uh, I laughed when I I opened this book for the first time in maybe 30 years and looked at this picture, I immediately thought Sylvester Stallone. Um, well, that was my second thought. My first thought was, what is he wearing? Um, so I think there's a lot of material here for for humor. If you look at the, uh, the short shorts, and I suppose that's a crop top, tank top, so there's a lot, there's a lot going on there, uh, including the mustache. 
So, um, but you just have to love it. I think that's, again, one of the fun things about comics is they are, uh, a, they are a publication of the time period. So, this is 1987, and that's it. That's what, that's what somebody, I guess, in shape in 1987 looked like as they jogged on the beach. <laughs> Again, I was flipping through the comic earlier, and I must not have been too far off when I thought about Sylvester Stallone, because the girls actually reach out to him uh, in that upper right panel, and they say, yo, Sly, you look a little lost. So being that Sly is in quotation marks, I wonder if the intention of having him look like Sylvester Stallone was was it was supposed to be made. Um, I, I I don't know. I, I think I think it is, but um, but it's pretty it's pretty funny. Uh, again, I do love the newspaper print comics. They they can still be colorful. They don't have the the level of detail. They don't have the, the nice finish that the current comic books have. Um, but I think the newspaper offers uh, an entire different experience. Uh, the paper is much thinner. Um, it's just a different type of art. Um, it's more, a little more pixelated. Um, so I, I think that's really, I think that's really neat. Um, we have a nice cameo from from Rhodey, uh, always good, always good to see Rhodey in a, in a comic book, uh, and then we have, of course, uh, some of the advertisements, which I mentioned, uh, I think are so much fun, uh, is Rainblow, I think Rainblow still exists, you can buy it in like those, in like a tube of the, of bubblegum balls, I think, uh, is there a price on here for what, what Rainblow costs, oh no, there I'm sorry, they're selling kites, so it's probably something where if you, you know, chew a thousand bubblegum balls or something like that, uh, you can send away for a kite that you still have to pay for. I guess it's five dollars, four ninety-five each. Um, so, who doesn't want that? I'm sure every kid wanted a, a rain blow kite to show their friends. <laughs> and, uh, these pages are kind of tough to turn. Uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty risque for uh, even the 80s, you know, in a comic book. <laughs> I was going to flip through a little bit. Um, again, I think they did a really good job on, on the colors on these comics. Again, we're talking newsprint but it still is very vibrant, and uh, I think it, the pages are still very attractive, even though this is from over 30 years ago. I do want to flip forward a little bit and get to uh, the main part, because we're not going to go through the entire story here. Uh, this story, in short, was about, I believe, Stark Industries was trying to acquire their first company. Um, so they were looking to take over another company, purchase it, and I believe there was somebody or something or someone on the on the other side in the company being purchased who did not want to become part of Stark Industries. Um, and that led this that led this ghost character to emerge. Um, to try to fight that merger. Um, and here's the ghost. The ghost is coming out of whatever supercomputer this is. Um, and he comes out and introduces himself as the ghost. I always like how comic book characters, comic books feel the need to clearly state who they are what character it is, so there's no question 
they basically completely announced themselves on the paper. Um, you can see the ghost. Even even today in modern comics, it's even more obvious. It'll be it'll be a, a bubble, and the text will be ten times larger, and it will say the character's name. So um, this ghost can. Visible. Um, so that's why they try to. They drew him with somewhat of an outline there. Um, if I remember correctly, uh, the ghost, if he, if he's completely invisible, he can't go through walls. But if he allows himself to be seen a little bit, then he can. So there's some type of power balance there, um, which I think gives Iron Man some type of an edge or advantage or at least a strategy in this in this series. Here's something interesting about comic conventions. Um, so look, the, the Manhattan Convention, which is, I mean, I would assume right now it's New York Comic Con. Looks like it was at the Penta Hotel on 33rd and 7th Avenue. Nowadays, it's at the Javits Center, and it's actually in many other locations throughout the city as well on that day. Uh, it's absolutely enormous, um, but it's not as enormous, at, I don't believe, as the, the San Diego Comic-Con. Um, and I don't see San Diego on this list at all which I find interesting. There's Anna, I am San Francisco. Um, I don't see San Diego at all, so it's kind of interesting to see where the where the comic conventions were in, in the mid-80s. Again, just some, just some more art. Um, oh my gosh, look at that laser tag. We'll get to that in a minute. Oh, look at this. Bonkers candy. Um, well, if you were a kid in the 80s, you probably remember Bonkers candy. Um, if you don't know what that was, it was kind of like a, uh, a starburst. But in the middle of the starburst, there, there was a square that was with a different flavor. Um, so, like, the outside flavor might have been purple. And grape, but the inside might have been strawberry. Um, I recall them being extremely popular, and I'll be honest, I haven't thought about Bunker's Candy in probably 30 years <laughs> until I saw this advertisement right now. Um, oh, also, uh, Ugly Balls. I recall these as well. I think they were also called Mad Balls. Um, and they were just basically balls that were kind of soft, and they were all of all these gruesome figures, and uh, you could buy those, and I recall that being pretty popular with the boys when I was in about fifth or fourth grade. This is also neat, too. Um, you could buy back issues, I believe, uh, right out of the comics. Uh, maybe you still can, but I really don't see anything like this in the comic books anymore. Um, you know, 56 cents a copy, which is almost free today. Oh, and then the, the ad on the back, uh, laser tag. That was pretty cool, too, and pretty popular. Laser tag, and um, I recall them selling sets of laser tag, and and playing that. I think there was even a laser tag TV show. So that's it for Iron Man number 219. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will go looking through my collection for